It is a feature ever since we invented science 400 years ago that our best ideas about the fundamental laws of physics treat the past and the future identically. They don't distinguish between the past and the future. So what I mean is, if you just take a simple example of billiard balls bumping into each other, obeying the laws of Isaac Newton. So you have perfect billiard balls. You imagine there's no friction, there's no sound or anything like that. They bump into each other, they scatter off, and you make a movie of this process, these two billiard balls bumping into each other and scattering. If you played that movie backwards, it would look fine. It would not look like anything funny is going on. The motion of two billiard balls bumping into each other and scattering is the same moving forward in time or backward in time. And the way that we think about physics these days is that even the large macroscopic things around us are built out of these microscopic pieces. So at the deep down level, there is no arrow of time, but in the world around us, it's an obvious arrow of time. No one is in danger of waking up and moving into yesterday rather than tomorrow. So what is going on here? Well, it is a bit of a mystery. We understand, I would say, half of it, and the other half is still yet to be explained. Uh, the beginning of understanding comes when we think about the transition from two particles bumping into each other to many particles bumping into each other. If you go play pool, and you rack the balls, and then you smack the cue ball into them and made a movie of that, the cue ball hits the nice organized balls and they scatter around the table. If you played that movie backwards, it would be obvious that something was going on. You never see balls moving around the table and then suddenly all by themselves organize into a nice rack. It'd be nice if that happened, but it doesn't happen in the real world. That's the arrow of time. Balls scatter very easily. They don't organize themselves spontaneously. So whatever it is that gives us an arrow of time, it has something to do with the transition from small numbers of particles, simple systems, to large numbers of particles, complicated systems. So let's see what's going on first informally and then a little bit more carefully. Informally, the world is getting messier. I don't need to tell you this. You don't need to go to the idea festival to find this out. But I'm here to say that the fact that the world gets messier underlies all of the different ways in which the past is different from the future. This is the arrow of time. The fact that left to its own devices, your room will get messier. You sometimes have to go into your room, your house, your apartment, whatever, and clean it up. You never have to go into your apartment and sort of messy things up because they've been organizing themselves. <laughs> that doesn't happen. That's the difference. As time goes on, things naturally do become messier. They do not naturally organize themselves. And so we've, we notice that. That's certainly one of the aspects of the arrow of time. The crucial thing is that is the aspect of the arrow of time. Every difference between the past and the future can be traced to the fact that disorder is increasing with time. And we can put this in physics jargon by introducing the idea of entropy. Entropy is just a way of measuring how disorderly things are. So if you have a pile of papers on your desk and it's neatly arranged, that is low entropy, that is organized. If they're scattered across the desk, that is high entropy, that is disorganized. And again, you can imagine the papers would naturally scatter themselves through the course of time. They do not naturally clean themselves up. This is a law of nature. This is the second law of thermodynamics. It says that left to its own devices, the entropy of a system will only go up with time. Things will only become more disorganized. So you can start with an egg, which is low entropy, organized, unbroken, pristine, delicately arranged, eggshell, egg white, egg yolk. You can break it. That's easy enough to do. It is hard to put Humpty Dumpty back together again. It is easy to break the egg, increase its entropy. It's hard to it decrease its entropy by cleaning it up. You can scramble the egg. It is very hard to unscramble an egg. This is how nature moves through time. Things get more and more disorganized by themselves. 